Hello, I'm John Pelley and I'm here to provide you with information about the Expert Skills Program. Dr. Kim Peck and I serve as co-directors of this program that we created in 2012. This video will explain how our program originated and how it works. This is one of two versions of this introduction, this one designed for teachers and another version designed for students. The two versions address the different needs and perceptions of each group. Now, since our tagline for the program is Mindful Learning, it will help to first explain what this means. In order to create a self-directed approach to learning, our program teaches several concepts that create a mindfulness in the student about how their learning needs to proceed. Recent research on the learning process indicates that students are more successful when they are mindful of how they are thinking about what they are learning. Research also shows that students need to be mindful that action is essential to their learning. The ESP assures that they know which actions will use time better. So now that we have a sense of what mindful learning is referring to, we can begin to answer the question, why is the Expert Skills Program needed? The Expert Skills Program is needed primarily because it produces self-directed learning. This helps students because the mere provision of time for self-directed learning without instruction about its nature is ineffective. It also helps teachers because it takes the student out of the receiver role and transforms them into a producer role. This transformation of the student from a receiver of information to a producer of their own understanding is the primary mission of the ESP. They learn that their teachers cannot transform them. Instead, their only chance to become competent is to transform themselves from passive receivers of information to active producers of understanding. And students that become producers of their own understanding also become self-directed lifelong learners. The ESP also helps the institution through its contribution to the LCME Standard 6.3 that concerns the provision of experiences to allow for development of self-directed learning skills. This accreditation standard likely exists because there's no reliable way to select for self-directed learning skills in our applicants. Pre-medical education is not only predominantly teacher-directed learning, but it is also teacher-directed learning that is aimed at the memorization level rather than at higher order thinking. One of the ESP principles that support self-directed learning is the self-assessment that's needed for the student to develop strategies that are individualized to their own personal needs. The ESP teaches that all the remaining components of self-directed learning, that is, the identification, analysis, and synthesis of information are all essential steps in their clinical skill development. The ESP can also help address low performance problems as seen on the next slide. Another important reason that the ESP is needed is that it addresses the related problems of low performance in courses and performance on USMLE Step 1. The reaction to these problems at many institutions has led to treating the symptoms but missing the problem. For example, in order to prevent failures on Step 1, schools establish qualifying exams for eligibility to take Step 1. But the goal here is only to provide time for additional study without addressing the learning problem. Likewise, to address failure in the curriculum, Remedial programs are designed that expose the student to the same conditions under which they failed without diagnosing their learning problem. This is frustrating for all of us because these solutions are workarounds that don't solve the real problem. And the real problem is the need for students to learn 
how to learn. Let's take a moment to clarify that expression, learning how to learn. It is generally assumed that all students who compete for admission know how to learn. But verify this for yourself by asking one of them the question, how do you prefer to learn? If their answer describes the activity and nothing more, then the in needed insight for self-directed learning is missing. On the other hand, if their answer involves how the activity balances weakness in their learning style and refers to areas of their brain that are engaged, then you are talking to someone with insight into how they learn. This insight is mindful learning, and mindful learning is a characteristic of self-directed learning. At this point, it's appropriate to state our program goal. The goal of the ESP is to help students become better performers by learning how to become better learners. They become better learners by learning how their brain functions to produce integrative learning. This type of learning is extremely important since students who persist in emphasizing memorization find both tests and clinical reasoning skills to become progressively more difficult. Our program helps students learn how to integrate even when they have a learning preference for memorizing. It's worth noting that many memorizer types who are helped to include integrative learning into their active learning style claim that they now feel a much greater sense of control. So now that we see the overall goal, let's talk about what the ESP is. The ESP is a guided self-study activity that supports any curriculum to develop skill in self-directed learning. This means that it requires no additional teaching commitment and no dedicated curriculum time. Further, it promotes a more adult-to-adult -adult interdependency of students with their teachers. As already mentioned, our program is supported by research in several related fields of study on how people learn. We consider it essential to teach our program from evidence-based knowledge, just as we teach our curriculum from evidence-based knowledge. Now, aside from these basic descriptions, a few more details remain. The ESP is available to anyone through free online access to the program resources. And while there is no monetary charge, students will still need to spend time to develop the needed mindfulness about their learning skills. In this regard, it is important to distinguish our program from the for-profit test prep programs, which mainly offer repackaged curriculum content. In fact, our program would help students use a for-profit program better. You might ask who can benefit from our program. Although it was developed with volunteer undergraduate medical students to be applied during medical school, it has also been successfully used by pre-medical students and residents. The principles are so fundamental that they've also been taught in public school and community college teacher in-service training. Why make it voluntary? Our program must be voluntary because of its self-development, self-actualization nature. There's no way to reliably grade it as you would a course of study, but we may be eventually able to recognize it in the same way that you can with the core and trustable professional activities for entering residency. We can still expect that the program will develop a following as it develops a reputation for teaching the best possible use of time by any student, regardless of learning style. So now, let's look at how the program came into being. The Expert Skills Program stems from a workshop that I had attended over 30 years ago when I was the Academic Affairs Dean. I was seeking to solve the recurring enigma where students who knew the material were nevertheless failing their exams. The workshop that I attended taught the educational application of personality type, a topic that I had not taken seriously before. 
The core concept that served as a breakthrough for me was the observation that students process information with a different, different emphasis on either memorization or on integration. Furthermore, I learned that this emphasis was due to an unconscious mental habit or learning style. I learned that the memorizers tended to have more difficulty on timed multiple choice exams, and that got my attention. The next step was to find a way to teach the successful learning style as a skill in order to help the failing students correct their problem. I was able to achieve this goal by teaching students how to construct concept maps, and the results were almost always dramatic. Learners who preferred memorization learned how to find relationships and patterns they previously missed. This approach was in sharp contrast to the common belief that learning styles should affect teaching rather than improve learning. Ten years later, I published my experience with this method in my book, Success Types. It teaches students that mindfulness about how they are learning helps them master what they are learning, and it includes a workbook of examples and exercises. At this time, I also decided to create the Success Types Medical Education website to help disseminate the Success Types book which is now available as a free download. Also, I wanted to provide value-added features such as an online learning style type indicator. In addition to the website and the book, there were other types of presentations designed for first-year orientation and also for pre-medical enrichment events. Some of these continue to be hosted by the Office of Admissions. Meanwhile, a third type of event was occurring for over a decade, during which I helped volunteer medical student groups develop the question analysis system for what is now the ESP Step 1 Prep. In 2012, Dr. Peck and I conceived of merging all three of these related activities to form the Expert Skills Program. Now we can take a look at the program as an orchestrated set of blocks of activities built from this past experience. The three main activities are called the ESP blocks. The prematriculation block is ideally completed prior to arrival at medical school. This block uses the Sess Types book, a video series, and a companion study guide. We send an email participation to participate in the program shortly after the student's admission is confirmed. The intent is to help them apply the expert skills principles during the remainder of their pre-medical studies. The orientation block continues the training with workshops on active learning that can also serve as a catch-up activity for students who were admitted to medical school later in the year. The ESP orientation block is also an opportunity for other medical schools to adapt or apply the program to their curriculum. The ESP Step 1 prep block involves self-directed small group meetings conducted through the first two years. These question analysis sessions are conducted weekly using questions concerning current topics. The sessions follow a critical thinking protocol that also reinforces mindful learning during individual study. I would now like to turn to some of the major concepts that are taught in our program. The expert skills concepts begin with the growth mindset research. This shows that academic achievement is improved by learning metacognition, that is, by students learning about how they learn and more specifically, how their brain processes information. This is the first concept taught because it's the most motivating. It basically states that students who understand how their brain learns score higher on their exams. And that result tends to get their attention. We next introduce deliberate practice as a concept from human performance research that shows how to apply skill training to increase intelligence. In short, the practice referred to in deliberate practice is simply studying. 
when you think about it, studying is repetitive and it's amenable to improvement. When study is aimed at correcting a deficiency, such as in learning integrative relationships instead of simply memorizing, it is referred to as deliberate. Our program then introduces concepts concerning the neurobiology of learning. This concept teaches that learning involves the concerted action of several skill areas in the cortex of the brain. Here we tie together the idea that both clinical problem solving and conceptual learning require development in the same skill areas of the brain. This skill development concept is the basis for naming the Expert Skills Program. As I referred to earlier regarding learning style, students learn that they have unconscious preferences that predispose them to either memorization or integrative learning. They are taught that while both types of learning are needed, they will need to guard against unconsciously neglecting their non-preferred style. The next slide shows several more concepts covered by our program. The concept of an experiential learning cycle shows how active learning occurs beginning with concrete experience and ending with action. The concepts from sleep research teach how replay of active learning experiences during non-dreaming sleep are critical to learning by facilitating consolidation. The importance of replay of prior events is that it leads either to consolidation or pruning depending on whether the study involved activity. We encourage the active learning system of concept mapping because it utilizes at least six different active learning methods in a time efficient manner to maximize both memory and understanding. This uh, method was a breakthrough for me because it helped me when I taught memorizers to conduct active searching through their learning resources. This extra step develops their ability for self-directed discovery of relationships they would not ordinarily learn. Also, it produces the most thorough reading possible. A second learning method we encourage is question analysis in small groups. Students learn that they not only develop thinking skills during the discussion, but they also experience improved reading that has been shaped by the group discussion. As I mentioned earlier, this method forms the basis of the ESP Step 1 Prep Block to provide an efficient and effective way to achieve long-term learning for Step 1. Our next slide explains how we plan to keep the ESP upgraded. An ESP blog will be established with a subscriber mail list including all of the current medical schools that are recommending the ESP to their students. The ESP blog will include entries designed to achieve several purposes. First, we will provide announcements about suggestions and strategies that we develop as upgrades. This will lead to an FAQ list that is characteristic of many websites. And we will also share experience that is volunteered from other institutions that could assist in innovation and problem solving at their location. We will also provide reports on new research that can be applied to learning and links to new videos that are added to the ESP resources link at the website. So let's summarize our main points for this video. We have described the Expert Skills Program as an evidence-based, self-directed program that was developed from experience with medical students. We have shown that the self-awareness that is developed by the program helps students test better by learning better. It's worth emphasizing that our program requires no change in curriculum or in faculty teaching commitments. Dr. Peck and I invite you to learn more about our program at the website address listed, or you should feel free to contact me personally. And as a final thought, it may be worth considering 
that schools that officially endorse the ESP will be able to include it in their LCME database as evidence of encouraging self-directed learning and the development of lifelong learning skills. Thank you for your attention.